Hello and welcome to lecture 18 of Math 1B03. In the last couple of lectures, we've been looking at what a determinant is. And in today's lecture, which is based upon section 3.3 of the textbook, we're going to be looking at some applications of the determinant. So in particular, we're going to be looking at Kramer's rule. We'll be looking at a volume and its connection to linear transformations. At the same time, we're also going to be introducing what's called the classical adjoint and its connection to the inverse. So let me just make a little comment here. So the Kramer's rule is a tool to solve Ax equals b in some special cases. And the adjoint has a connection to the inverse of a matrix. And in all three of these topics, we're going to see the determinant appearing. So let's just make myself uh, disappear there. And we'll first start by talking about Kramer's rule. Okay. Now, the, the big thing that you want to remember about Kramer's rule is that it's a theoretical, i.e. not practical tool to solve systems of equations. Okay, so one of the things we've been looking at in this course is how to solve a system of equations. We've seen very many different ways to do that, and Kramer's rule is going to be add to our toolbox. Now, we need, in order to describe Kramer's rule, we need to kind of introduce some notation, which I have here. So let me just walk you through it. Say that you have a square matrix, and A1 through AN are the columns, and you have a vector B in RN. So the vector B has the same number of entries as each of the entries in your column. And what we're going to do is we're going to let AIB be the matrix that you get by removing the ith column of your original matrix and putting in the vector B. Okay, so let me write that here for you. So what we're doing is replace column I with the vector B. So as a simple example of this construction, here I have my matrix A, it's a two by two matrix, and here I have a vector that belongs in R2, and I want to, I can compute A1B and A2B, because the A varies as you move across the columns. So I have A1B is the matrix I get by replacing the first column by the vector 5, 3, and A2B, is the matrix I get by replacing the second column by 5, 3. Okay. And so this is our notation that we need in order to describe what Kramer's rule is. Okay. And Kramer's rule gives you a new way, as I said, to solve a system of equations. But there's actually an extra hypothesis that's hiding here, which is suppose that you start with an invertible matrix. Okay. Now, for any B in Rn, this system has a unique solution. And in fact, we actually haven't said anything new here. We've actually proved that when the matrix A is invertible, then this system always has a unique solution. So there's a unique solution. What's new coming from Kramer's rule is that if you look at this vector, and so it's an n-tuple, there's n entries, we can actually figure out what each of these values are using to determinants. So in particular, the i-th entry is given by taking the determinant of this matrix that we get by replacing the i-th column of A with B and computing its determinant and dividing it by the determinant of A. And so that's true for each of the entries in your matrix. So just to illustrate this, okay, let's say that we're looking, we, we, we had our three matrices. We have our matrix A, our matrix A1B, and our matrix A2B. And let's see if I can get them both on the same screen here, and I can compute all of these determinants. Okay, so the determinant of A is 3 times 4 minus 2, which is 10. The determinant of A1B is 5 times 4 is 20 minus 3 times 2, so that gives me 14. And the determinant of A2B is going to be 3 times 3, which is 9, minus 1 times 5 gives me 4. 
So let me rewrite this here. If we look at the matrix, oh, I forgot what my matrix is here. Let me, I need to see my matrix again. Let's move it back over. So I have three, two, one, four times x equals five, three has the solution x1, x, oh, not x, no arrow on that, x1, x2. And this is given by, well, we would have 14 over 10. And in this spot, we'll have 4 over 10. So that will give us the unique solution to the system of equation. So it's a pretty handy tool. I mean, for two by two matrices, this is actually fairly quick. But as you can see, why we would call it more of a theoretical tool and not a practical tool is because once these matrices start getting of any reasonable size, say even a five by five matrix, you're having to compute the determinant of at least, uh, at least n plus one matrices. And so as those matrices get larger, it becomes harder and harder to compute. But anyway, Kramer's rule is a handy rule to have. And at least for the two by two case, it's very simple to kind of use it to solve your system of equations. So we'll take a little break here, and in the next part, we'll talk about how we can find a formula for the inverse of a matrix using Kramer's rule.